This is my uh, favorite parlor organ case. This is uh, by Sterling Organ Company, Derby, Connecticut. Came out in 1881, and this example was built in 1885. I'm kind of surprised they were still building it in 1885 because it was sort of not in style by then, as it had been just the the thing in 1880. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I finally did some work on it yesterday. I glued the back panels back together. All the all the glue joints were shot, and <clears throat> I was kind of inspired to make the little um, missing wooden pieces for it. Oops. Um, you can see that little this little doohickey here. It's a, a quarter turning. It forms the capital, sort of, to these uh, fluted columns that go up. So there's the, an original one up there. So then it's divided by this block, um, which that was there. And then down here, this was missing the the base and the the plinth for it. So I had some I had some walnut. Thank God that was thick enough and the right size. I could make these turnings. So what? One sec. Here's what these things look like in, in life. Um, yeah, there you go. That's a little better focus. It's It was a turning, so it was like a, a full circular disc shape with the um, with the slightly rounded thing and the little, um, the little fillet at the edge. And then they're cut in into four sections. And so a quarter, since those are quarter columns, they have quarter bases, quarter capitals. The other pieces that I made was way down here at the bottom, this piece of base, little terminal block of baseboard with chamfers on both sides. So I had to make three of those that were gone. It was missing this ball right here. I found one of them as chance and serendipity would have it. I found one of those in a parts box that was off of another organ. And you can see on this side, whoop, dang loose. On this side, this base was out and this corner block had come unglued and so I glued those back in and then it, I had to, uh, I had both of these little uh, baseboard extension termini to make and glue in. And so what I still have to make on this, and I'm really not looking forward to this, is this little thing, I call this the Parcheesi Man. Um, so I'm missing the one at the other end. Ah, um, anytime when you're doing, you know, turnings, freehand, anything that has a sphere on it, those are just super hard to do. And then all the work on this is so fine. I mean, um, you know, any one little slip up and you've ruined it. So I'll probably have to make two or try to make two or three attempts. And the last thing I'm missing is the main finial on top, which is, ah, that is so, so not fun to have to make that. Because, of course, all I have is a catalog engraving to go by, which is not really clear. I think I know what it is. Um, but the exact detailing that it would have, clueless. Um, the cool thing on this is, you can see these flowers. They're, um, they're like um, dish, they're like bowl turnings, essentially. And they were done in a, a slightly lighter shade of walnut. You can see them against the black. They're really they're more golden, not even allowing for the darkened varnish on them. Um, stand some chance that those were done in butternut. And um, they, they kind of pop against that black painted background. This case is like so cool. I mean, you can see there's sort of a picture, I guess, of Apollo. Um, looking at music or whom, whomever in sort of sitting on a classical bracket and so it's almost like that's the the muse that will inspire you as you play this incredible East Lake cabinet for some reason maybe it's just the way they decided to build it this this thing lifts up and out it rides in a, a, a group slot so you can take the take the front of that music pocket out if you want so it has a bunch of these panels, like th these on the side, those are just very simple. And this is a black la uh, lacquer panel in a softwood, 
that was then um, carved out after it was lacquered. So these are actual um, sort of like woodcut carvings. So on these sides there's birds. Then there's this, just a sound grill in the middle. That's the basically the only sound grill in the organ is this. And this is what this cloth used to be blue. And then over here you have the other bird. And you have the black lacquer panels on the fall board. Let me pull back. You can see that, so those are black. Um, then the same thing on the front panels where a sound grill would be, but they didn't decide to put, decided to leave a sound grill out. And then you get down here, and there are some very uh, kind of Christopher Dresser inspired uh, kind of floral themes down there. And on the side, have a really, oh, that's too bad, the light's not really good, but you have a really nice crane amongst the you know, the rushes. There's a crane doing what it does, sort of prancing around looking for a fish. And then you have a, a, an overtly Christopher Dresser uh, lily design that goes in this lower side panel and it just sort of ends up as, you know, the three stems become extremely, you know, non-representational. They just become lines. But then as it goes up, you know, all of a sudden, ta-da, they're, they're these odd deconstructed lilies up at the end of it. It's got, you know, it's got detail in every possible place, and it's all like just the really nicest textbook East Lake stuff of these, these flat, flat ornaments, very, you know, flat deconstructed floral patterns, um, railroad tracks, you know, parallel, a lot of parallel lines. Uh, a nod to the classic with a row of dentals um, and very typical uh, barrel like turnings um, again the floral motifs that are just taken to an extreme of um, you know abstraction and um, again little rows of dots and railroad tracks uh, very, very cool, elaborate, imaginative, stop chamfering details, framing the panels. Um, again, on there, more stop chamfering and more abstract floral shapes. And um, anything down here? Well, the, the pretty cool thing, it has a little bit of more representational carving, where this is sort of carved in 3D. This leaf that, oh, jeez whiz. Sorry, tripod hammer thing slipped. So, yeah. Um, very, very, always wanted one of these. On the flyleaf, what do you call it, the dust jacket of the first Gellerman book that came out in 75 or 76, he put the whole catalog page for this thing in there, and um, including the description. And the the copywriter for the catalog in 1881 went pretty crazy, just not really describing the organ, but describing the effect that it had on your aesthetic sensibilities and saying, you know, this is such a high expression of taste and uh, the inference being, you know, won't your, won't your neighbors be so impressed that you have something this unbelievably t tasteful of that style of the moment which East Lake, which had kind of a brief moment in American, uh, you know, cultural history, that examples of this were probably, you know, within about five years, the, the new designs that came out were quite a departure. They had really watered down the principles that you can see just on, on full display here. And um, so anyway, it's completely unplayable right now. I didn't even bother to show you the keyboard. Uh, God, right? There you go. So it's got your standard um, 11 stop parlor organ action, two sets of reeds, that's it. Um, actually, you know, I'm, I'm sure it has a typical sound for, for what it is. It's not bad. It had a, a, just a crazy, crazy catalog price of 400 bucks. And that's not based on the music, that's just based on the way it looked. Um, so, anyway, there's the first report on my Sterling Alexandra, something that I've wanted since I saw it 
pictured in Gellerman in, in 1985. All right, thanks. Bye.